Dean, advising directors, and thank you for recording the session. Um, this will be available to other folks later on. So if you have um, colleagues that might be interested in some of this information, we will be posting the link to the recording and you can access that at a later date. So that'll be coming in some of the follow-up materials. Um, but Julia is a realtor helping buyers and sellers use market data, building science and land use information to make more informed choices. And she's thrilled to be working with renewable energy again, leveraging it and energy efficiency to help homeowners save money and the environment on a distributed level. She's active in her hometown of Cape Elizabeth as secretary of the Library Foundation Board, and most recently was chairperson of the Town Energy Committee. She's created and taught continuing education classes to realtors on green and smart buildings tailored to the main market since 2014 and has graciously joined us here in Vermont today and has been a contributing writer for the Green and Healthy Homes magazine, is a published nonfiction author, and serves on the advisory board for Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnerships, working to promote the use of building energy scores and other benchmarks for residential buildings. And Veronique Bouignon, who I don't know if she's joined yet, but will be joining us shortly, is a PhD and scientist, entrepreneur, and, in, and energy industry leader she has over 10 years of professional experience in leadership of the financial energy industry and has a track record in pushing the boundaries of energy analytics. Veronique is currently the co-founder and CEO of Clearly Energy, provider of innovative solutions to reducing greenhouse gas and, and um, building emissions. And she's also a professor at Johns Hopkins. So she's very um, well suited to teaching classes like this. And we're excited to have her join today as well. And I mentioned a little bit about NEEP, but we, um, uh, we do technical assistance in a variety of platforms across the region. And that is the capacity in which I am here with you all today to, um, in addition to helping Montpelier pass their policy, I'm also supporting the Vermont statewide rollout of the Vermont Home Energy Profile. And so um, I'm also joined by my colleagues, Chase and Brian, who will be able to answer some questions in the chat if they come up. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, just feel free to submit them in the chat. And then we will also have a Q&A portion at the end before we break out into a workshop. So if you all have some information on your homes or any homes of clients that you're working with, we're gonna do a little workshop at the end for about 25 minutes um, and allow you to actually use the tool itself in an interactive manner. And so hopefully that'll um, spur a little bit more further learning. So that's our plan for today. I'm going to go over the benefits of labeling and the value of home energy labeling and talk a little bit about where else it's being used before we dive deeper into the other types of labels that can be used. And then we do a deeper dive on the Vermont Home Energy Profile itself, which Veronique will explain the kind of methodology behind the automated energy model that is used to create the Vermont Home Energy Profile. So that's what we're going to cover today and our speakers. And Katrina, I'm wondering if you got your audio figured out and wanted to say anything else before we dive in. But it doesn't look like it. So I'm just gonna keep rolling on and Katrina can chime in as she sees fit. So, um, and I'm also going to ask Brian if you can just make sure that Veronique has the correct link because I don't see her joining yet. That would be, oh, Veronique is here. Cool. Thank you. Sorry. I'm, just... I'm here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Veronique. Got a lot of people on my screen, so I'm just trying to balance everyone. All right, so I'm going to dive in since we have a really packed agenda today and we want to leave time at the end for Q&A and for our workshop. So to get started, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about where we are seeing other residential labeling policies across the country in addition to um, Vermont and Montpelier, which are actually not added yet to this map, but they, they are updated on the map um, at the link here. So I will send that, post that link in the chat for you all to check out in a deeper, on a deeper level. 
Um, but this is a map of labeling and disclosure po policies and programs across the country. So as you can see, these are popping up more and more. And we at NEEP are actually helping um, a handful of other communities across the region in developing some of these policies that aren't noted yet, yet here, um, but will be kind of coming up in the next year or so. So I just wanted to show this to show that these types of policies and programs are really gaining momentum and we're going to start seeing more and more of them. So this is why it's really important to have this type of training and to start talking about this and get the conversation rolling. You'll notice that the descriptors in the legend are trigger point type of documentation and compliance style. So these are three main components of a labeling policy or program. And compliance can be voluntary, mandatory, or some sort of phased combination, starting either with a subset of buildings or a delayed enforcement or penalty date. And this is the approach that Montpelier has taken. So in addition to it being rolled out statewide, Montpelier allowed about a year of voluntary compliance, which we're still in that time period right now. And the um, full ordinance will go into effect July 1st, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. And just by a show of hands, how many people are in Montpelier and how many people are not? So raise your hand if you're in Montpelier. All right, I see a couple. Cool. So yeah, if you have any Montpelier specific questions, feel free to uh, send me an email and um, I'm happy to talk more about the Montpelier process and I'll post my email in the chat in a little bit. Um, but going back to this map and the primary uses or components of a labeling policy or program, the trigger point indicates when a label is created under a policy or program. For mandatory programs, it's common for labels to be provided at the time of home listing or the time of sale. And the type of documentation refers to the type of label or disclosure and can vary from simple energy bill utility disclosures, which are operational data, to a certified home energy score, which is an asset rating. There's also custom labels like the Vermont Home Energy Profile, which obviously we will talk more about in a bit. We'll also talk a little bit more about operational versus asset-based rating in a little bit. And in addition to deciding what type of label or bill disclosure will be shared, there are other important policy decisions and considerations that communities have to make around the trigger point and compliance type. A time of listing policy provides the most time for potential buyers to begin considering how a home might meet their financial and energy needs. And as for compliance styles, voluntary programs can be useful for those who are already seeking this type of information, but they rarely achieve the levels of savings needed to meet decarbonization goals. Mandatory policies can be very effective in achieving savings goals, so long as they are informed by the needs of the community. And this is the approach that Montpelier has taken on their local level and Vermont at a statewide level is currently in voluntary compliance. So that's just a little bit about labeling policies and um, what they look like on a countrywide basis. And now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the benefits of home energy labeling. So Vermont, Montpelier and others are pursuing home energy labeling policies because of the residents to, or the benefits to residents, home buyers, sellers, real estate professionals, and the utility system and local economy. For homeowners, home energy labeling empowers them to make more informed decisions about their home's energy and financial needs and can help to protect residents from burdensome energy costs. Energy labels help residents to better understand their home's energy system and identify appropriate energy efficiency upgrades for energy and cost savings and maintaining healthy home environments. The labeling process identifies the most effective efficiency measures for a particular property, assisting the resident in prioritizing measures that will have the biggest impacts on health and cost savings. For buyers, they can make more informed purchasing decisions with a more comprehensive understanding of their home's energy system and usage before purchasing a home. For sellers, Studies show that homes with disclosed energy information sell faster regardless of performance, and they can also earn a premium. 
Sellers can also market energy features that may be attractive to prospective buyers or can use the information to make strategic upgrades before putting their home on the market. And then for the real estate market, realtors can offer more prospective clients even more information about their home's energy features and appraisers can offer more accurate valuations. For the utility system, residential labeling is a public educational tool that encourages customers to pay more attention to energy usage or even to change behaviors in order to reduce energy costs. Retrofits of low performing homes can increase system reliability and decrease utility customer service costs. There's also benefits to the local economy. Occupants of labeled homes are more likely to invest in energy efficiency measures, such as purchasing high efficiency products and hiring skilled energy professionals, which helps stimulate the local workforce. Labeling will increase the demand for the local energy workforce, including auditors, realtors, and contractors who are skilled in this area. And occupants of healthy buildings also see higher rates of productivity and can also use some of that uh, saved capital to be spent elsewhere in the local economy. And next, um, studies show that nationwide and even outside of the country that um, energy efficient homes sell for more and faster. As more labeling policies are implemented and studies are completed, we are seeing that energy efficiency is valuable in the residential property market. On average, homes disclosing energy information spend less time on the market regardless of performance. And that's really important to note because we've seen that Homes with high energy performance can earn a premium, but homes that score a little bit lower have not seen um, similar devaluation. So there's no decline, there's no indication as of yet based on the policies and programs and studies that exist that there's been a similar decline in value for low performing homes, which is a common misconception and is really important to note. So those who value energy efficiency are attracted to, to more efficient homes and those who don't get to see the information and make their own decisions. An Elevate Energy study from 2016 shows that energy efficiency improvements can save customers money on power bills and create a healthier home environment. And an analysis of labeling policies in the European Union, Canada and Australia show that home buyers appreciate having more information rather than less and that poor ratings don't discourage home purchases but do inform energy upgrades. So this helps homeowners, residents, and potential buyers make the most informed decision possible even if they will need to fix a certain energy feature of the home. And I can post the links to some of these studies in the chat um, and we'll also send them out in the uh, follow-up information if, in case anyone wants to do a bit of a deeper dive. So there's two main kinds of uh, ratings or energy disclosures. We have operational ratings and asset ratings. And operational ratings evaluate a home's energy performance based on how it's being used and typically consist of energy utility bill disclosures of actual usage and costs. So this is more about how the home is operated under the current resident. While asset ratings evaluate a home's energy efficiency based on its physical characteristics. So this is a little bit better for potential buyers or potential tenants who can see how the home might operate under um, their, uh, their way of operations. And there's a variety of assessment methods and documentation me methods for this, but they do often rely on an in-home audit, except for the Vermont Home Energy Profile, which can be used um, by the resident itself, re themselves, rather than relying on a certified energy auditor. And we'll talk more about that automated energy model a, a little bit later. This is just another way to look at operational versus asset ratings. So you can see a little bit better um, what's included in an asset rating and what's included in an operational rating. And then there are also certain instances where this whole picture can be included and the occupational or operational data can be um, standardized for weather and occupation, um, not occupation. Um, the, the people 
yes, occupation, the people living in the, in the home and how they adjust their thermostat settings. So there's three main types of home energy disclosure. There's utility bill disclosure, which is simple, quick and low cost and includes operational information. And then there's two approaches to asset-based ratings. That this can be a custom label that's customized to fit the needs of the given community or state. And then a certified score, which is um, typically dependent on in-home auditors and can be more expensive and also more time consuming. So this is all kind of teeing up a little bit about why Montpelier and the state of Vermont decided to go about a custom label to better fit their needs. And now I'm gonna stop talking for a bit and hand it over to our real estate professional, Julia, to go over some different kinds of home energy labels and ratings. And it's important to note that while these are not the pathway that Vermont has taken, these are all available for Vermont residents. And also on the Vermont Home Energy Profile, it wraps in these other labels. So if a home has some of these other labels already done, that will show up on the Vermont Home Energy Profile. So the, the goal of the profile is to show an apples to apples comparison since there can be, there's a wide variety of different types of labels and the way that they're portrayed. And that can be a little bit confusing to potential buyers. Um, and I'm just gonna make one more plug. If you're not currently speaking, could you please mute yourself? That would be helpful. Thank you. Um, and now I'm gonna hand it over to Juliet to go over the types of labels and readings. Thank you, Emmy. That was great overview. Very, very, uh... Very good and complete and um, well done. Um, I am delighted to be here today um, to talk to you about um, energy labels. It's a subject that's um, near and dear to my heart. And I just wanna start off by saying, although I wasn't a realtor uh, when I lived in Vermont, I did live in Vermont for 20 years. I started out in Pittsfield and ended up in Pomfret and then kind of jumped over New Hampshire and came to live in Maine. But um, I, uh, I come back frequently and, and we are um, uh, in the uh, building energy community in Maine, uh, very envious of um, uh, the uh, Efficiency Vermont initiatives that you guys have in the state. And so I'm, uh, I'm delighted to be here today. So about a year ago, um, Neep asked me to look at um, Niren and uh, to see uh, how you would go about um, entering in the um, information on the uh, Vermont Home Energy Profile. And I did that and got a chance to um, uh, get, uh, get familiar with it a little bit. We have a different MLS uh, system uh, in, in, uh, in Maine. But first I wanna talk to you a little bit about why energy labels are important to me. So I'm a, I'm a green broker. I have a NAR designation as a green broker. Does anybody else out there have a green broker designation? Raise your hand. Did anybody raise their hand? Yeah, no, nobody raised their hand. Okay. There's a few. <clears throat> a few, great. So I've had mine for about 10 years and um, I don't get a chance to work only on green buildings because we just don't have uh, enough of them that are in transactions these days. But um, but it's really important to me to make make the point that, you know, we've got, we've got two things going on here. We've got um, buildings that represent about a third of the carbon emissions that we have to cut by 2050 in order to keep the planet um, safe. Um, and then on the other side, we've got a whole lot of money that's going out the window literally for heating and, and even sometimes air conditioning, although neither our states have a lot of air conditioning, but especially heating. And um, so, uh, I don't know about you guys, but our heating and electricity costs are are going up and up and up, and and it's becoming very um, very costly to heat uh, your home, especially for uh, low income folks. So, the more that we can get the um, carbon emissions out of our buildings by by um, instead of paying for um, uh, utility bills, and and instead even if you had to take out a loan to put in some insulation and air sealing and 
and that sort of thing, or heat pumps, um, and it ha had a, a fixed monthly payment for a few years, that would be over, and then your building would not have um, high operating costs for heat. So it's really simple thing, just on the financial uh, 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 aspect of it, to explain to your clients and be heroes and, and heroines to uh, really help them figure out how to do this. Now, you know, we all, uh, we all sell houses, right? And so um, we, uh, we talk about curb appeal. Well, um, buildings uh, that are energy efficient, <clears throat> they don't have any curb appeal. It's not like granite counters or, uh, you know, a beautiful staircase or an entrance or anything like that. You know, you can't say, come on over and see my new kitchen. You know, come on over and see my energy efficiency. You can't see it. So the only thing that stands for for what you've invested in your in your building to to reduce your carbon footprint and to reduce your your energy bills is a label, and um, so uh, uh, you can you can look at that label as something that you can show not only to your friends and and your family but also to an appraiser, to a buyer, to a lender if you're if you are, are, or your family someday is in the position of selling that house, that label speaks for you, even if you aren't there to speak for what you did, because nobody can see what you did. So it, it's really important. And like Emmy said, there have been studies that have been shown that people get more money. Now, you know, you can get more money just for listing a house right now. It's a crazy market, but but in a in a normal balanced um, market. Um, that's going to come in handy. So we're really, uh, really talking about something that not only um, uh, represents the investment that you've made, but actually can can um, help you to save money. So um, being able to um, uh, have a label is really important. Now, um, uh, Emmy, can you <clears throat> can you advance to the slide that um, number twelve? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, so there's a lot of different labels, right? Uh, you've probably heard of, of uh, all of these. And so I'm gonna just go through them so that, um, so that you can differentiate uh, between them. Um, the HERS index, LEED, Passive House, uh, Energy Star, Net Zero Ready, Home Energy Score, and then um, Vermont Home Energy Profile, which is your um, custom made, um, uh, very, very cool um, uh, uh, label that you have. So starting out with um, the HERS index, I'm very excited. I've done a total uh, energy retrofit on my house and uh, put in um, heat pumps and, and solar and battery and uh, I have an electric car. And so I've, I've done all the things that, that, um, that I uh, advise other people to do. And I'm gonna get my HERS index um, here pretty quickly, but um, uh, so I can't tell you what mine is, but um, I can tell you that it's a very involved process and it requires um, an energy auditor a lot of time. I've had three blower door tests um, and uh, my energy auditor is worth everything I've paid her, but I do pay her and um, uh, it's not, it's not uh, inexpensive. And you guys have more HERS ratings in Vermont than we have in Maine. We don't have that many, but um, we don't have that many people that can do them either. So um, it's, you know, it's, I would say, uh, you know, by the time you're all said and done, it's, it's probably gonna be a couple thousand dollars to get a HERS rating on a house. Now, is it is it worth it? To me it is, but it is a substantial investment um, uh, in uh, um, uh, time and, and um, they have a whole program that they go through, that they, they score your house on, so it's quite involved. Um, there are millions of um, HERS ratings in the country though. So it does, it does uh, translate to um, like a, a nationwide um, standard. Um, and uh, uh, next slide. Another uh, national standard that, um, that people are pretty familiar with is the LEED standard. Now LEED is even harder to do than, than HERS. It requires um, somebody coming out at uh, various parts of usually a, a new construction process to verify not only um, what's in the building, but 
what happens to the materials that are used to, to build the building. And, and um, so the, the embodied carbon in the materials and, and the um, recycling of uh, uh, waste materials. So you don't have that big dumpster outside the new construction of all the stuff that they didn't use that they just threw into the dumpster. It's all uh, has to be accounted for. So it's a very involved process. There's four, uh, three different levels. Um, uh, and, um, and it's so involved that hardly anybody gets it on a residential property uh, anymore. Um, I would say that uh, commercial uh, properties that, that um, uh, get LEED certification that has to be uh, um, renewed um, to, to hold it, uh, do get it because it helps them with their leases um, uh, on uh, usually office buildings and that sort of thing. And um, so it, 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 it does continue to be a very strong standard there, but not so much on um, uh, residential. So passive house is um, as a standard that is also very involved and um, is also nationally known, uh, but it's actually very popular for uh, residential construction. Uh, uh, I don't know if you uh, have been in a passive house or if you sold a passive house, but um, they are uh, very, uh, very special buildings. The very meaning of passive house means that you don't need to do a whole lot of active mechanical um, uh, intervention to maintain the temperature of the, the building. Um, in fact, uh, a passive house is so is so tight that if the power goes off in the in the building and there's no backup power, um, it, it it could take up to a couple of weeks for the water in the toilet to freeze. That's how much the building retains its its um, temperature, and it does it um, with really thick walls, a lot of insulation in the in the um, ceiling and in the um, uh, and in the um, foundation. Most of Passive houses don't have basements. Basements are really hard to seal and, and insulate, so they just don't have them. And, um, and they very tend to be very simple uh, buildings so that there's not a lot of dormers and, and uh, changes uh, in angles that, that um, are places where air can escape. And um, they're, they're, um, uh, the, the amount of air changes is less than one per hour. So, so the, whole, the whole building um, uh, is um, about a half uh, an air change an hour. So um, that's, that's how tight it is. And they all have to have mechanical ventilation. So um, Passive House is, a, is a very popular, but again, very rigorous and difficult to achieve. Um, next slide, please, Emmy. Um, Energy Star, you'll be familiar with Energy Star um, because uh, a lot of appliances come with Energy Star labels, and hopefully, um, you know, more and more people are looking for an Energy Star label when they when they get an appliance. But um, uh, next slide, the uh, actual Energy Star label that we're talking about here is for the building itself. So, um, in, as opposed to a, a passive house, an Energy Star building um, only needs to get. Um, uh, less than four air changes an hour. Uh, that's uh, about the um, about the tightness of uh, uh, new construction. I think that Vermont is looking at the 2021 um, IECC uh, building energy code now and, and uh, Maine has just jumped up finally to 2015. 2015 has a, a three ACH 50, three air changes per hour at 50 pascals of pressure. Um, uh, requirement for uh, new construction, unless you um, trade it out uh, in a, um, a, a res check um, analysis. So, uh, so uh, Energy Star is not as hard. Uh, it does require a radar to come out um, and uh, and do the calculation. It's mostly done on um, new construction, and um, there are. Uh, uh, a lot of Energy Star uh, homes being built, not so much in the Northeast, but um, more in the South and the um, Southwest. Next slide, please. Another um, Energy Star label that you might see out there is called Net Zero Ready. And what that refers to is a house that is all 
weatherized and electrified. So first you wanna um, you know, make sure that your building envelope is insulated and air sealed. Then uh, you want to um, uh, get the combustion out of the building so that, so that you don't have combustion gases and um, any fossil fuels. So uh, convert uh, heating to heat pumps and the hot water to heat pump water heater. And then, um, you know, wire it uh, in advance when you're building it for um, solar uh, to be added. And that's called a net zero ready um, house. So net zero uh, uh, means that the, the building creates as much energy as it uses. So it, um, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a, a balanced system. And when you add a battery to that, like a, a Tesla um, backup battery, I think you guys have a efficiency Vermont program for that. I know you did before. Um, that enables your building to be actually um, a, uh, a, a closed system. So the solar can keep operating even if the power is cut. And um, uh, you can, um, uh, you can be a uh, uh, self self contained entity in in effect. Um, the next one is a home energy score. Um, it's very popular in the other Portland. I'm from Portland, Maine now, but uh, Portland, Oregon um, I, uh, is using the home energy score. It's pretty popular, and um, and it's and it's like a, it's a very simple score. Uh, it does require an auditor to uh, go to the home and um, there's a 70 point uh, report that they, they have to um, fill out, but um, it is more like um, the HER score in that it's a, it's a number and, uh, and it's required to be um, uh, uh, achieved. You have to get one of these in order to sell your house in Portland, Oregon. So, um, so there's actually a lot of competition between, um, between sellers. Uh, or at least there, you know, there's some competition to um, get a better score before they go on the market so they, they can um, get more money for the house. Um, like Emmy said, there's no evidence that getting a poor score um, uh, uh, blemishes a property. Um, and um, it's just information. It's like, uh, it's like an MPG uh, sticker on a car you just, you know, you wouldn't buy a car without knowing what the MPG is. Even if you don't care that it's not terribly efficient, you know, at least you're, you're gonna know what it is. And, um, and then finally, um, the uh, Vermont Energy Profile. So um, the, the, the cool thing about, about this profile is to me anyway, that um, it, it, um, it gathers a bunch of information from other databases to, um, uh, to uh, help the seller fill it out. And um, uh, it's, um, it's just a, uh, a, a very uh, interesting approach to um, uh, polling uh, public databases um, and other sources so that, so that you know a lot of information uh, before you get going. And um, so as such, it is a, a uh, I would say like a, like an artificial intelligence kind of kind of um, uh, model, and it doesn't require a an auditor to come in, so it doesn't cost very much to uh, produce. And in fact, we as as realtors can help our clients fill them out with you know with some caveats. You don't want to um, you don't want to uh, take a, a, a responsibility for something that you 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 don't have. Uh, confidence in the information. But um, ideally, the, the, the seller would fill it out and, um, and you, you would help them to, to do it. And um, it, uh, it is um, something that I don't know about in, in Vermont, but I know that in Maine, we have a, um, uh, like you, we have a, a seller's property disclosure. And um, in Maine, we're, we're supposed to fill out the energy consumption for the heat source, even if the seller doesn't, we're supposed to go and try and find it out. And I can tell you that we're not very good at that. Um, it's uh, un uh, unfortunate we're supposed to do it, but, but we don't. And so I, I'm gonna guess that maybe um, a lot of, there's a lot of blanks on property disclosures in Vermont as well. And um, next slide. So, um, 
just in summary, the lead passive house uh, and uh, her scores are are um, nation nationwide. They're they're really well understood, but they're expensive. Um, Energy Star and Net Zero Ready are, are less so, but still require site visits. Um, home Energy Score also requires a professional site a site visit, but it is less expensive because it doesn't include a blower door test. And the Vermont Energy Profile has a real opportunity to um, uh, to make a difference here because. Uh, we can do it ourselves. We, we, we don't need to bring in an auditor and, we, and it doesn't require a lot of expense on the, on the part of the seller um, to do it. So that's a, a, a good um, argument that maybe we'll get these labels to get some, uh, what they call critical mass and um, start doing some, some good for people out in the marketplace. So that is my quick uh, overview of all all the different types of energy labels that are out there. Emmy, thank back you. to you. Yes, thank you so much, Julia. That was really helpful to give an overview of all the different types of labels that can be included in the home transaction process. And like I said before, all of those other labels, if a home has one of them done, they will be included on the Vermont Home Energy Profile. So this profile is really trying to provide an apples to apples comparison and wrap in all of the different features of a home. Um, next, I'm going to hand it over to Veronique to talk about the Home Energy Information Labeling Exchange or Helix and the Vermont Home Energy Profile or VHEP in a little bit more depth. So first I will, we will start with Helix and I'll hand it over to Veronique to explain this database. Okay, um, so Helix is actually um, a database um, hosted by NEEP um, itself. We're just kind of the technical support party on it. And the goal of Helix is really to have a place, a, rep a, a repository for um, home energy labels primarily. Um, it also stores home solar information. So in the case of Vermont, it stores um, all of the labels that, um, you know, and there's, there's probably one of each of the labels, at least that Julia talked about. There certainly are plenty of HERS labels um, because um, they're often associated with new construction in Vermont. Um, so, so homes with, um, with known certifications and they're known um, to us through um, um, a, set, a, set, a set of different parties, including Efficiency Vermont and um, some of the, the raters themselves, like the folks behind the HERS label, um, or um, EAN for the solar information. So they all kind of share information with the Helix repository, which then allows us when we build the Vermont Home Energy Profile to pull that database um, for any pre-existing label or, or solar information. Um, so there are, in general, most of the labels Julia talked about are, are qualitative in nature, meaning you have a, you know, you have a, a um, you know, a passive house certified home. Um, and two of them are actually quantitative in nature, in nature, and that's HERS and home energy score. So for the homes that have HERS or home energy score, they, so they've been visited by a certified professional. They come with um, an estimated consumption for the home or actually cost, um, but we take the consumption and recalculate the cost since utility rates um, change in particular <laughs> lately. Um, so for, for homes that have been certified in the past um, three years, I believe, if it's five, but I think it's three, we actually use the HERS and Home Energy Score um, consumption estimates in, in lieu of what our model would come up with, which is what I'm gonna talk about next. Um, so Helix also then stores the labels created by the Vermont Home Energy Profile, can then share them with, um, there we go, with, um, um, multiple listing systems, including NIRIN. So we um, have a bit of a technical issue with NIRIN that somebody can, can, can maybe um, talk to, but essentially we can share solar information on an automated basis 
to the data provider that then feeds the NIRIN system, um, but they cannot accept um, home energy labels and it's purely a technical um, issue on, on that system side of things, which is why the labels have to be entered manually. And I saw there's some slides about that at the end, right? Um, I mean, so I won't, I won't dwell on that. Um, but yeah, the home energy, um, you know, the home energy profile is essentially a combination of data we pull from tax assessor records, data we pull from Helix and the model and all it, you know, and all that gives you really is, is a starting point to, um, um, to then refine the estimate that, that, that's provided um, to you. So I think with that, I'll dig into the model a little bit and then we'll get back to the, okay, so there's there's one more, yeah, yeah, I think you can, so you will see the portal, you, I think we've, we've penciled in enough time for everybody to sort of play around um, with their home. Um, this version is customized for Vermont, um, meaning all of the um, incentives and savings programs that are shared, um, you know, have been, the package has been put together by um, Efficiency Vermont. Um, but, um, and the report that's generated is the Vermont Home Energy Profile. So you'll see data on the web, um, you'll see how you can adjust the various underlying estimates and then um, generate the profile. So next slide. So I think Julia mentioned that, you know, the energy estimator is classified as an automated energy model. That's not, you know, <laughs> it's always, <coughs> just, sometimes it's tricky to, you know, sign labels to things because then people kind of run away with, with concepts that are not be accurate. But, but what it does is it can use either, you know, real estate um, listing information or it can use property tax assessment data to create a baseline home energy cost, right? So at a bare minimum, if we know the home size, the home age, the type of home, meaning whether it's a single family detached home, whether it's attached because having sidewalls changes the energy profile, whether it's a unit in um, um, an apartment building or a mobile home, um, its location, which obviously gives us the weather, um, we can kind of create this sort of this, this call it this first cut, right? This sort of um, first estimate of, of a home's energy cost. Now, obviously the more we know, the more accurate that's going to be. Um, knowing that as, as Emmy mentioned, how people actually operate their homes um, varies tremendously. So there's an inherent quite a bit of, you know, of uncertainty in, in a lot of, in a lot of these estimates, not just ours, but, but even the estimates that are provided to you after, after um, a home visit. Um, so um, this does use zip code level utility rates, and I'll get into a little bit of detail on, on the modeling, the, the underlying modeling. Um, it runs very quickly, meaning you can tweak any assumption and it essentially will, will give you updated um, estimates um, very, very quickly, as opposed to the model which underpins the Department of Energy's home energy score, which actually is also the model which underpins hers, um, is a Department of Energy model called Energy Plus, which is great. It's a great model, but it, um, it takes, you know, at, at, at best case, it takes 10 seconds to, to compute a home and, and usually a fair, a fair bit more. Um, so one of the big federal mortgage backers, Fannie Mae uses our model um, on their portfolio for two purposes. One is to evaluate energy burden of um, the burden of energy costs across their portfolio. And the other is for their um, greenhouse gas reporting. So what you will really be playing with today is sort of a um, plus um, where you have this sort of starter, you know, estimate of the home, which is what it is. Um, some of you will say it's way too high and some of you will say yeah, it's about right. And some of you will say it's too low. We know that on average it's fine, but um, it, it is what it is and you have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, and then by, by refining, by entering, you know, essentially what you know about the home, the home system, you know, the most important things for us to know are, um, 
obviously making sure we have the right fuel. So um, some tax assessor records, the ones in in Montpelier and the ones in Burlington and South Burlington that we've kind of pre-processed um, give us the primary heating fuel of the home as well as whether or not it has air conditioning as well as the number of kitchens or the number of units. Um, so those may not all be correct, but that's what we start with. Um, so validating that we have the right heating fuel, the, the age of the heating system, the type of basement, um, or foundation and a rough level of sort of level of attic and, and insulation are kind of the, the key the key things. But beyond that, if if you want to you know tell the system that you have a, a 12 year old side by side refrigerator that's energy star rated, um, everything will go into refining the estimate. Um, and you can in, in the case of the Vermont model, you can also put in either cost estimates, if you have a set of utility bills for your home or for the client's homes or consumption estimates. And that then, you know, kind of everything else kind of then is, is re-estimated re to, um, to, fit, to fit that. Um, next slide. So without getting into too much detail, there's always, you know, questions as to how, how, how the, you know, what the model actually calculates. Um, so it calculates consumption costs and emissions. In the case of Vermont, we focus primarily on costs as kind of the metric that people understand. Um, you know, different programs, I think as Emmy and Julia have mentioned, take different, have different takes on this. Um, some programs that are focused more on the, the home energy score focus much more strongly on kind of the, the, the rating element, you know, you're a three or you're a five. Um, some programs like um, Massachusetts has a custom label, focuses quite strongly on consumption and emissions. The folks in Vermont felt two things. One is that cost is about the only thing that people understand about the home, unless you're sort of a, a wonky wonk like, like the few of us here. Um, um, but what the system also, the label also does is kind of show you on, on sort of a, a wedge where your consumption falls, because visually that's, that's easy to, to understand. Um, so the cost is really just a consumption multiplied by local utility rates. Those are zip code level utility rates. Um, more often, very quite more often than you might imagine, there are multiple utilities in a zip code, in which case we take the average um, other fuels, we, we, we use monthly, um, for example, heating oil and prop propane residential costs provided by the Department of Energy. Um, so these not, may not be the same rates at which somebody last fill, you know, their, their heating oil tank, and they might disagree with that, but that's a way to sort of, you know, re-reference everything back to, to a normal. So th these are state level, um, state level numbers. And then, you know, when it gets to wood, <laughs> wood cord and wood pellets, it's, uh, we have a fixed number, you know, some people might have free sources and, and some people might pay for it. Um, but again, it standardizes the, the cost assumptions. Um, and on the consumption side of things, um, the, the estimates are broken down between what we call space heating, which is heating the air and heating the water. Um, that's obviously fuel specific, has system specific efficiency parameters, and you can include a secondary heating system um, for up to 50% um, of, of the overall um, use. Um, cooling takes in central window and heat pumps, um, each has their own efficiency parameters. The appliances you'll see are broken down between refrigerators, um, washers, dishwashers, um, what you cook with, um, and then special for Vermont, we added, um, forget what they're called, but they're essentially beer fridges because we had a lot of complaints in testing in Montpelier that um, there was no beer fridge option. So there's a beer fridge option now. <laughs> we also got complaints that people could not do induction, who had induction stoves, which are the, the highly efficient electric stoves. Um, 
and I have a new awesome induction stove. Um, uh, couldn't do that, so we, we plug that in. Um, and then everything else is where some of the biggest uncertainties come from. Um, there's obviously lighting, but then there's what the, the trade refers to as plug load, which is everything else. Um, and that's, you know, your toaster and your microwave and your, um, your computers and your peripherals and, and everything else that goes with it. Um, if there's a pool we or pool or hot tub, we kind of have a special estimate for that. But but plug load is is such a big catch all that that's where a lot of uncertainty comes from. Um, and we won't talk too much about emissions since that's not really goes doesn't really go into the label. Um, but if it's of of use to to some of you, happy to talk. Um, next slide. Yeah, I think we talked about that. I don't want to get into too much of, of the weeds as to how the estimates, um, how we come up with the estimates. What I will say is that um, what we use as a database of reference for assumptions um, on things we don't know. So if we just have basic tax assessor information, we probably do not know if you have single pane, double pane, or triple pane windows. Um, so there is a database maintained by the Department of Energy called RESDOC, which is a database of housing characteristics um, by region or actually by across 400 or so weather stations. So it provides us with fallback assumptions on what the housing stock looks like given a certain character set of characteristics. So, you know, we know the nearest weather station. Um, we know whether it's a single family detached or attached or other types of home. Um, um, and from there that that will give us default, you know, primary heating fuel type if we don't have it, for example, type of windows if we don't have it. Um, level of of attic and building insulation if we, if we don't have it. So so um so these are Department of Energy kind of fallback assumptions that, that we use. Um, next slide. So I have two minutes, three minutes left. Um, yep, you can skip this one. It's there for you if you need it. Um, okay, so then we get to the question of data accuracy, um, which is always a fun thing to talk about. So um, there, I brought, I've tried to kind of explain this by, by, by breaking it down into to two pieces, right? So the Department of Energy's home energy score was evaluated relative to utility data. So utility data goes, you know, people do all, people do, a, you know, when you're in the energy trade, you realize people do crazy things with their homes. Some people heat their homes by turning their oven on and leaving the oven door open. Um, some people sleep with the windows open and some people don't. Um, um, so there's a lot of intrinsic variability. So the home energy score relative to, to utility data came out as sort of give or take 20 to 25%. There were three models estimated um, and they all kind of came, 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 came out around the same. Now our model relative to home energy score generally, and when, it come, when it, you're looking at the average across hundreds of thousands of homes, in the case of the study we did with both VEIC in Vermont and the Rocky Mountain Institute across the country. Um, we did 8,000 homes across, um, across the country. The averages are right in line for our, our model relative to the home energy score. But there's, again, there's a lot of variability. Um, and some of that variability can be explained in that if we're running a model with say a half a dozen home parameters, Every home is going to be fairly plain vanilla at the start, right? While the more parameters you, the more information you provide on the home, the more it's going to be either really efficient or really inefficient, or the, the more spread there will be. So some of the, the spread is, is explainable. Um, all right, next slide. So we did run tests across the nation. The Rocky Mountain Institute tested two automated energy models across 8,000 homes. Um, the average, so BTU is kind of the summary metrics of energy consumption was a half a percent. So that is, um, um, you know, that's kind of, that means the average is right in line, but the spread is that 20 to 25% that I talked about. 
But as soon as we add in like the foundation basement type, the heating system age, that difference narrows to 15%. So that's a model to model comparison, but it was actually quite, um, quite, quite good. And the next slide is testing in Vermont. Um, so we tested in Vermont against, um, I forget exactly how many homes, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Um, 243 homes, thank you, Emmy. <laughs> so those are homes, again, that had um, home energy scores. Um, and we tested kind of a basic AEM with just a few parameters um, and then a slightly more elaborate version with the heating system age, you know, wall attic insulation, and you can read off the, so the difference of averages is how close we get to, you know, on average across this 243 homes. You'll see that when you do your home, you may be way above, you may be way below. But generally speaking, the, the correlation, like everything we observed um, showed that, that the two models were, were behaving very similarly. And then finally, New York stats. Um, just, you know, again, so we did 6,000 homes in New York fairly recently. Um, and the overall average consumption came within 4% of home energy scores. So um, all this is to really say that there's, I think, you know, both Julie and Emmy kind of made a point, there's value to in-home visits, especially as somebody is embarking on work in their home. Um, the goal of the energy estimator was to try to provide, in particular, the real estate industry with something that gave robust results um, that people could sort of take ownership of um, at, at much lower cost. Um, and I think if we get to remotely, we'll talk about how this potentially will, you know, actually even generate home energy scores um, in, in, in not too much time. So I don't know if there's any questions at this point. I don't know if you can skip to the next slide. I think, yeah, I'm done here. Um, any questions? Questions? No? Actually, I, I have a question for you, Veronique. Um, yeah. So as, uh, and I've been thinking about this, as, um, uh, as realtors and, and uh, actually homeowners as well, um, as we put in uh, heat pumps, we're uh, transferring the heat fuel type to something that you know gets delivered um, and, and we have a bill for it in, in specifically um, to something that's um, uh, you know in our energy bill and, and that includes all the other things that we use electricity for in our buildings. So, you have this fascinating model that that uh, is is has all these averages. Is there something in there that we could use to estimate the heat pump uh, 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 fuel consumption on our uh, seller property disclosures? Um, yes. So if you take the model and you put in, so if you have a utility bill, you have the overall. You know, say it's all electric, right? So you have one. Kilo, big kilowatt hour number. If you put if you put that in, then alongside the assumption, uh, alongside the the knowledge that it's an electric heat pump for heating, then you know all the pieces will kind of rescale to fit, if if that makes sense, right? So you still have lights, you still have. Um, so if we know the total is a hundred, um, how should I explain this? Right, we, we know the total is a hundred. Um, and just say there's lights and there's a there's a an, a an old school heating system, right? Um, so we might say, okay, then it's 50 50, right? It's 50 percent your old school electric heat and 50 percent your lights. But now, if you tell us um, that it's an electric modern electric heat pump, then then the heating chunk will will shrink, right? But we still know the total, so that means the other part has to has to grow. Um, so um, but if you know, if you tell us that you have all LED lights, then we know that piece is small. So then it's got to come from the old fridge, right? Uh, so the pieces shuffle around um, in order to kind of add up to the total if we're given a consumption total. Um, what we do do in the spirit of getting back to an asset rating to a consumption that's provided to us is we adjust it, but only slightly 
Um, we adjust it for the weather that was experienced over that period so that if you had a really cold winter and you tell us that, you know, your utility bill was $1,000, well, in a normal winter, maybe it's only $900. Um, and that's generally not a huge change. Um, we also adjust um, things for, um, for two other things. One is the number of people in the home because that influences water consumption, right? So again, if, if your utility bill is a thousand, but you have 10 people in what would be a three person home, then we say, okay, the average new batch of homeowners um, will pay less, right? And the last thing is thermostat setting. So that if you, you know, like it hot in the winter and cold in the summer, then effectively you're gonna consume more than, than a normal, um, family. So we do these adjustments. They're generally not huge. Um, um, and then fit everything inside that, that total. Yeah. Really interesting. Thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you, Veronique. And we will have time for a brief Q and A after. So if you want to hold your questions, we will get to those in a moment. Um, I'm sure they're are a lot of questions on everything that Veronique just said. So we'll also dive deeper into those in the breakout rooms a, a bit later if needed. Um, but I did just want to give Veronique a chance to go over um, how this automated energy model is being used in another state right now in New York with our pilot program remotely. So Veronique, if you just wanna give a brief overview to that, that'd be great. Um, yeah, I think the next slide maybe. Um, so Remotely is, is a pilot um, um, funded by NYSERDA. If you're familiar with NYSERDA, that's New York State Energy Research Development Agency. They fund a lot of efficiency programs in Vermont. And they asked for ideas to move to virtual, you know, ideas to virtualize energy um, auditing. So we, we had our system and decided to kind of push things further. So we've talked about kind of the energy estimator, which is the, the pre-assessment here um, that we're talking about, which is step one. And then in step two, we've partnered with a California firm called Signatron, which has really neat technology that runs on a smartphone and allows you to measure the space. So you essentially walk around and you point at you know, the corners of the room and you tap them and it says 2,300 square feet. Um, and then you tap at, you know, floor and ceiling and it says, okay, you have an eight foot ceiling, which you might've known already, but, um, and then <laughs> you tap at the window. So one of the, the big inputs of, um, of home energy scores that are collected on site um, are this finished area measurements and window measurements by direction. So we can complete with this app, we can completely automate the measurement of windows by type and by, by direction. Um, when you get to a HER score, for example, there's a blower door test and other things that we obviously are not trying to do with the phone app, but we're trying to get to collect all of the information required for um, a Department of Energy home energy score with the combined systems. And eventually I think we wanna put all the data collection in, in the phone app um, so that in, um, I don't know, 20 minutes kind of a homeowner could um, come up with their own, you know, home energy assessment. So the Department of Energy is very supportive. Um, we're gonna collect some data to sort of show them that it, um, that, that it, you know, that it's a solid way of collecting information. Right now, the scores we're generating are preliminary scores, so they're not, you know, they're not official final score. But for those of you that might think uh, in the Vermont context of, you know, I like, I like the in-person element or I want a home energy score, I think that in a, in a few months, we'll, we'll be quite close to, to be able to offer that with kind of this, um, this combined solution. Great, well, thank you so much for that overview, Veronique. Um, now I'm gonna speak a little bit more about the Vermont Home Energy Profile itself and how it came to be. So this is the structure of participating parties. We have 
the Montpelier program being run and administered by the Montpelier Department of Public Works. So they are in charge of making sure that all homes listed for sale as of the effective date of July 1st of this year um, have a Vermont Home Energy profile generated and listed for the property on the, the sale listing. This has been done in conjunction with the Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee and a subgroup of that that is called the Montpelier Policy and Planning Working Group. And this group also uh, collaborated with the Vermont Energy Labeling Working Group, which is the statewide working group, to make sure that this can be available to homeowners and residents throughout the state. And thanks to Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas and Burlington Gas and Electric, it's important to note that the Vermont Home Energy Profile is free to use for all residents. So this is why um, we are trying to balance accessibility, affordability, and accuracy due to the lack of certified home energy assessors in the state. That's why, um, again, that this approach was chosen. And um, as we mentioned earlier, some of these other labels can be very expensive to generate because of the in-home needs. So um, based on the structure of, of this model is free to use for all residents. So that's why it's so accessible. It's also an internet platform rather than needing to invite someone into your home to do an in-home audit. Um, I also wanted just to note that in all of the assumptions that Veronique just went over that the energy model makes, it's okay if the resident doesn't know all of the inputs that are um, added, all of the different parameters, because uh, we're able to make a educated guess on what um, the responses for some of those parameters might be. So this has been created with homeowners and residents in mind and is specifically made for the resident and the user to be able to fill out. Um, this was also tested on a focus group of people aged 18 to 80, and it found that it took about 20, 10 to 20 minutes to fill out this form in comparison to an in-home audit, which might take upwards of three or four hours. So that is where the Vermont Energy Labeling Working Group and the Montpelier Policy and Planning Working Group really focused their efforts over the last year or two, two years in the development of this tool to make sure that this tool um, is useful for residents and homeowners. Some other partners include Efficiency Vermont and those other utilities that I mentioned who are funding the use of this profile, and then NEEP and Clearly Energy. And we'll talk a little bit more about the different roles of all of these participating parties in a moment. So Efficiency Vermont is fielding and answering questions from customers around the state and is serving as the primary host for the Vermont Home Energy Profile materials and customer support. We also at NEEP have a list of resources which we can post in the chat um, and it will be available in the slide deck that you can check out later on. Um, we also have a support log and are notifying parties of tasks in a timely manner. So if anything needs to be updated around the tool, we are on top of that, so far we have not seen many um, questions from residents, so it seems to be that this tool is working as anticipated, and um, I anticipate that we will get some more questions as we head into the mandatory period in a few months. But the city of Montpelier is fielding and answering questions from Montpelier residents and real estate professionals and is responding to queries submitted by partners relevant to um, Montpelier's home energy information ordinance. NEEP is also supporting Efficiency Vermont and the city of Montpelier with responding to some of these questions as needed. And like I mentioned, we are hosting several resources. The recording for this session will also be posted on the NEEP website if you would like to reference it later on. Um, and you also have the slide deck. And then Clearly Energy is able to respond to technical requests submitted directly through the tool. So if anyone is having technical issues, um, there is a button to connect you straight to Veronique and she can respond to the, some of those technical questions. Um, and we are regularly checking the support log and like I said, making sure that this is working for all residents of Vermont and Montpelier. 
So with that, I'm going to go into a quick demo of the Vermont Home Energy Profile as used on my, this is my parents' home in Westover, Vermont. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment and pull up the Vermont Home Energy Profile. And I'll start sharing again. So this is the Vermont Home Energy Profile website. It is clearlyenergy.com slash Vermont. And I will post that link in the chat for us to use later during the workshop. So that's in the chat now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create this um, profile for my parents' address that, on the house that you just saw. And like Veronique mentioned earlier, we pull some um, initial stats on the home, such as the age and size of the home from publicly available tax assessor databases and other information, but um, we've already kind of skipped that step since I already have a login and I've already claimed this home, but those are the first couple of steps. So you have to claim your home and show that you are either the homeowner or the utility bill payer or someone acting on behalf of the homeowner or, or bill payer, such as a real estate professional like yourselves or a home energy contractor. I also wanna note that linked here on the side, there's a step-by-step -step guide for how to fill out this profile. And there is this help and feedback button that will connect you with the technical partners of Clearly Energy. So once we start our profile and claim the home, we're able to start editing some of the home facts and dialing this in to create a more accurate um, view of our home's energy performance and usage. So I'm just gonna click on a few of these categories to show you what's included, but we're gonna go through these in um, more detail uh, a little later on in the workshop. So uh, updating some values here, you can see the initial cost estimate is $6,280 a year, but that might change. So if I say, I let's say I had a really old heating system and water heater, that might change it and make it um, a little bit different. We can also change the, the cooling costs. And I can say that we have a, a newer system and that this will just continually alter the different categories of uh, costs. So there's also lighting and other costs. If it's, yeah. if it's not changing, it's probably because you have a consumption thing or consumption or costing set. Yes. But you can unset mm -hmm. it. You can unset it if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I, you can go at the top, you can clear utility bill information if you want to. Okay, keep going. Won't yeah, my, won't my secret demo. <laughs> um, where so I think there's a piece in here about weatherization somewhere, but this is where you can add your utility bill information, and this dials it in to be even more accurate based on the operational data. And like Veronique mentioned before, it's standardized for weather, occupant, and thermostat settings to make it more. Um, uh, more of an apples to apples comparison for potential buyers. Um, so we have the lighting costs, appliance costs, like Veronique mentioned, and the solar cost savings, which won't show up as part of the calculations for potential new buyers, but will show up in the energy highlight section if your house has solar. So these are some of the few um, different parameters that you can fill out. And I'm not gonna go too deep into them because we're gonna do a whole workshop on this a little bit later, but this is the approximate uh, cost per year. And again, it's in cost um, units because that's the most, the unit that is kind of most um, understandable for potential buyers and for current residents. There's also this find savings tab that allows you to access links to incentives and rebates in, available in your area. And there's also this scenario tab that can help you um, figure out what it, what it might look like if you had different thermostat settings or a different number of occupants. And then there's also a help tab, which is interesting to look at, but I'm not gonna go too deep into it now. Um, and I'll let you all play around with it a little bit more. But once I am satisfied with my inputs, I can click create profile. 
It'll give you an overview of all of your inputs to the different parameters made and the different assumptions that the model makes if you put unknown for any of these different areas. And then you have to click this box to certify that you're providing this information to the best of your knowledge. And then you can leave this box unchecked if you'd like to make this available to real estate professionals. Um, as Veronique mentioned before, um, this is needed. You have to um, make it available to the MLS in Montpelier, but for the rest of the state, it is. you don't have to make it available. And as Ver Veronique mentioned, it's currently a manually entered process rather than automatically populating because of the tech issues at Mirin. Um, if you're completing this on behalf of uh, the resident, you can put your name in here and your affiliation with the resident. So this is what you would do if you're filling this out on behalf of a client. And then there's this comment box. So if you feel that something has not been accurately or completely captured in the profile, you can write that comment here, which was added um, mostly for Montpelier's sake. So I'll just say there is a two car garage and breezeway. And then we'll click submit and it will generate the profile. And I might need to stop screen sharing again and reshare a new window once my PDF pops up. So let me bring that over here. I'll zoom in a little bit and start screen sharing again. So this is the profile and it gives you the expected annual energy use in, in MMBTUs, which might be more helpful for a home energy contractor. And then this is the primary metric that is used for residents understanding. So this is my home's energy usage. And then right here, we're comparing to a home built in the same year and of the same size. So this is that apples to apples comparison that we keep talking about. So instead of having like the DOE home energy score, which is on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is the best, or the HERS index, which is on a scale of zero to 100, where zero is a net zero home and 100 um, is a low performing home. It can be a little bit confusing with these different kinds of metrics. So that's why we created this wedge to make it a little bit e more easily understandable. This also shows the home's annual expected energy costs and it says homeowner verified because I am the homeowner, my parents are the homeowner and so we are the ones that filled out this profile. But if this was conducted on behalf of the resident um, by a real estate professional or home energy contractor that would show up here. And then in this, um, this is just a breakdown of the expected annual energy costs and where those costs come from. And then here on the energy highlights section, this is where we've said that we have done DIY weatherization upgrades and generated a Vermont home energy profile. This is also where some of those other um, labels that you could have had on your home will populate here based on the information that we have stored in the home energy information labeling exchange. And then this take action section down here gives an overview of different actions that you can take based on what you've already done to the home. And this was created, the, the algorithm for these recommendations was created by Efficiency Vermont and the Vermont, um, the VEIC to make sure that there's kind of one or two bigger upgrades that are recommended and then three to four smaller price items that can be used. So it's it's done in a way that is supposed to be helpful for the resident in figuring out what they can improve upon while not overwhelming them with too many uh, costly items. This is just um, another breakdown of what's included in that wedge and helps um, give a little bit more understanding to what low average and high energy use means for each of these categories. And then here are some of those links to additional resources for improvement. And then this is the comment page. So as you can see, I only wrote there's a two car garage and a breezeway, but you can populate this entire page if you would like. And on the side here just gives kind of the general home information when the profile was created and, and who generated it. So this is the profile that will be added um, for Montpelier listings, for all Montpelier listings as of July 1st. 
And this is also the same that um, will be generated for Vermont statewide. So with that, I'm gonna go stop sharing my screen again and go back to the slide deck. So just give me one moment here. Going back to the slides. So again, that's clearlyenergy.com slash Vermont. And we'll be using that in a little bit in our workshop. This is another overview of the profile, which I already spoke about. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to Julia to um, explain what this looks like when you're adding a Vermont Home Energy profile to a listing and what the typical disclosure looks like. And then after that, we'll have a brief pause for questions and then we will go into the workshop and start playing around with the tool ourselves. So back to you, Julia. Thank you, Emmy and um, Veronique. Really, really interesting to understand how that all fits together in the process that, that you guys went to to get to uh, where we are today. Um, fantastic. Um, I'm going to be really brief because, as I said, I, I had the opportunity to, to dive into your um, uh, Paragon system, but uh, uh, I have very... Uh, superficial knowledge of it because I don't use it every day like you do, but I did take some screenshots and I apologize that it's, it's pretty hard to read them, but I'm going to um, tell you what they say of, of how you're going to actually get this information into your listing so that you can um, get it to work for you. So, um, so here you're going to um, uh, go to the green verification section and select Vermont um, Home Energy Profile. Uh, thanks for the uh, help with the with the arrows there. Um, the verification body is listed as Efficiency Vermont. In the status, you're going to have a, a, a drop down menu, and you can choose between official or preliminary, depending on what it is. In the year, um, probably is going to be uh, the current year, but it could also be uh, going back all the way to 2015. In green verification rating you're going to input the result achieved by the home. And uh, the metric states the number of um, uh, million BTUs uh, that is uh, consumed per year. If it's new construction, you're gonna enter that, uh, otherwise no. And in the URL, you're going to put uh, clearlyenergy.com is uh, where uh, this source comes from. So uh, all the all the different uh, things that we went through, all the different labels that we went through are possibilities to be entered in in this matrix that that uh, that you you guys have, um, and that's how you would make sure that it's that your home energy profile is noted there. And um, I will say that probably it won't go out of the state. Only you, as a realtor. Um, uh, are, are gonna be able to access this information. It's not gonna show up on any third party website like our Coldwell Banker site or, or your um, uh, 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 realtor.com or, or any other site. So you are uh, the, the source of this information. So not only make sure that you input it, but make sure that you go look for it when you're looking for um, listings for your buyers so that you can point out that um, uh, this home has, uh, has a home energy profile. Um, under, uh, let me advance my slides here. Under, um, uh, under the rules that you are permitted to fill out the profile information on behalf of or with the owner. Um, and uh, as a listing agent, if you're, you're thorough, um, uh, you may have already found out everything that you need to know to complete the profile. Um, but if not, it will guide you through as, as um, uh, Emmy's demo showed um, how, to, um, how to figure out uh, how to make your score as accurate as possible. Um, you can input the insulation levels and the heating bills, but make sure you verify them uh, if you are the person that's filling it out. If you are not sure of the accuracy of the information, you should um, check the box that keeps the information only for the use of the owner and does not make it public um, because you don't want to, um, you know, you don't want to be uh, uh, promoting uh, information that may not be verified. 
Um, if down the road, the house is listed and you put something that affects the value, that's not true, it could be your responsibility. So make sure that um, if you do fill things out that you can, you know, you, you have evidence to, to back up why you put what you put. Um, and if the profile is required to list the property, uh, it would be better to be um, the seller's assistant or some or, or the assistant of their representative to complete it um, uh, by talking them through what uh, uh, some of the terms mean and, and how to fill out the how to fill it out themselves rather than, than you be the one to do it. That's my uh, lawyer hat on there. Um, next slide, please. Um, so here. Uh, you're going to um, go to the features section and check that you have a home energy rating uh, certification and that um, uh, it is a uh, must have. So then you go in the documents section and make sure you attach your uh, home energy profile for uh, your listing so that it becomes part of the, of the um, uh, attachments in the, in the listing itself. And then finally, again, I apologize for the uh, low resolution of this last slide, but it's um, it's the section of your seller property disclosure that um, uh, gives you uh, a space to uh, show your energy consumption for the house. And um, it could be uh, three cords of wood. Uh, I, I, I've lived in Vermont. I know <laughs> people burn a lot of wood. And... Um, uh, but you also have uh, a lot of oil and some natural gas. So that's the typical thing that gets put in here. Um, if it's a, a all electric house, um, uh, as, um, as Veronique said, um, the, the system is gonna help you tease out what the electric heat pumps and the heat pump uh, water heater uh, are adding to the, the total electric bill. So um, that uh, is another one of the really awesome features of this uh, label is that uh, it gives you so much help to to try and uh, do the best job to describe the energy consumption of the building. All right, so that is what I have to uh, uh, add in this section. Thank you. And yeah, as you can see here, this is really the only disclosure available um, currently statewide. So it doesn't give you a whole lot of information, which is why the Vermont Home Energy Profile was created to be a little bit more in depth on the different um, possibilities of your home's energy performance. This is the time of sale flyer. So if it is not required for you to generate and display a Vermont Home Energy Profile, if you're not in Montpelier, you can include this flyer at the time of sale to inform the new buyer that they can generate a Vermont Home Energy Profile to learn a little bit more about their home's energy performance and costs. And I'll um, send this along in the follow-up materials as well. And these are all of the resources that we have available. So there's a link to Clearly Energy's automated energy model methodology, a lot of which Veronique spoke to before. We also have a few promotional videos and a sample label, as well as the how-to guide that I spoke about before. We also have a couple fact sheets and one pagers for residents. And then um, Net Zero Montpelier also has a web page with um, a breakdown of frequently asked questions and so does Efficiency Vermont. I also, in the follow-up materials, I'm going to send along the time of sale flyer that I just showed and a sample email to your MLS um, requesting that they kind of, um, we, we need you all to be the proponents of, of this and be requesting the MLS to make the changes needed to modify the system in order to be able to automatically populate some of this information. So I will send um, an email of, with some sample language for that. But now I'm gonna stop screen sharing and we'll pause for a few minutes for Q&A. And then we will go into our workshop where we can all play around with the tool together. And Veronique, Julia and I will each host a room and my colleague Brian is going to join Julia's room to be support there. Um, and this is really to give you all a chance to either use your own home or a client's home to um, start filling out some of those parameters and generate a profile. 
But Veronique, do you have anything else to add before we open up for Q&A? Um, so you need to create an account in order to fill out information. So please do that first. If you can't find your confirmation email in your in your inbox, check, you know, the it's called commercial emails under Gmail or or, or, or wherever it might be, um, but there, there's an email confirmation that you need to click on to get, um, to set a password to then, to then log in. Um, um, and then apart from that, in, in Montpelier and Burlington and South Burlington, South Burlington, the majority of homes have been pre-calculated. So there's an estimate, there's an existing estimate that exists. Elsewhere, you'll have to fill in kind of you know, background background information. Um, and that's really just the availability of, of tax assessor information. So if, if you're in a place where you know you're gonna do a bunch of these and you know that, you know, th there's electronic records that, that are easy to access and we can pre-crunch homes um, for, for you there. Um, but generally speaking, Vermont is not, is, is, is not great when it comes to electronic tax assessor records. Thanks for that extra context, Veronique. And um, do we have any questions at this time? I want to just say the thank link you. that was sent. Sorry, the link that was sent. Where was it sent from? Or whose email was it sent from? For the password. It should be coming from Clearly Energy to your inbox. So check your spam folder if it's not. Oh, there. maybe it's in spam. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, Selena, did you have a comment? Yeah, hi. I mean, thank you so much and, and thank you all for your work. Um, it's such uh, an exciting time, I think, for all of us. And I think the messaging um, to, to us here in the room is that, you know, the time is now. It really is. We see the war in Ukraine, the fuel prices going up. It's just an incredible opportunity to message to buyers and sellers that this that using point of sale is an incredible catalyst to get the work that we need to be need to have done on the built environment. Um, and so if you're speaking to a seller, you can talk about all the advantages of marketing to this very, you know, the, the increase of eco buyers or, you know, however you want to phrase it. But I think that um, certainly when you talk to banks, you can talk about the you know, lowering the rates and, and, you know, decreasing the carrying costs for buyers and increasing the resale value, making it a more saleable and healthy home. These are the kind of messages I think that we can as consumer facing professionals, I think that it's really important just to make it really simple. There's really sophisticated, fabulous science and data I'm behind it. Emailing you. Please that, make sure that you get this. Yeah hasn't moved us enough. So we need all of us here in the room to be the real um, uh, like evangelists. We need to get out there and, and be able to message this now in a really clear way. And it's just econ basic economics really do make sense to people out in the field. So I think if we, we talk to our buyers, we talk to our sellers and basically just show them that we're gonna put more money in their pockets and it, it's gonna make it a much healthier, much more saleable home then the rest of it, there's a lot of automated support behind the scenes that has taken years, decades to develop and, and it's here to support us. So I, I just wanted to, sorry if that's more of um, me um, on my soapbox than, than a question, but I'm just, I wanna say thank you to everyone and, and it's exciting. I think it's a really important moment in history for us to take this forward. I have a comment. I yeah. would just like to yep. say several years ago, I had a builder that I had the home listed and it was a totally five-star any energy efficient state-of-the-art home, triple glazed windows with fillers in between. <clears throat> I had never seen anything like it in Vermont and people at the time were not receptive to that. Today, I could probably sell that house 26 times, but I yes. think over time, the um, information and, and the education has helped people realize and the cost of energy, how important that is. And then I couldn't give it away because it costs more to build. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just the, and I, I do, yeah. 
No, I just wanted that just a quick comment to um, what Selena was saying that we ran a a pilot last year with um, I guess I'll name them the Vermont State Employee Credit Union VSECU where they offered a half a percent rate discount if if people um, um, added at least 10% of, of, so I, you know, for, for essentially for energy improvements, right? So if, if you, if you increase your loan by at least 10%, um, for any efficiency improvement, then they would cut the rate by, by half a percent. And it was only in two counties. It was only a pilot, um, but it was quite successful. So hopefully that can scale, um, and create kind of, you know, financial appeal, not just you know, you know, create real appeal to to prospective buyers um, to to improve the houses um, because um, yeah, uh, you know, oil rates are high right now, propane rate rates are high and, and going higher, um, and um, and and yeah, and, and it makes sense for it makes just economic sense for a lot of these homes to be to be retrofitted. So sorry, that was a little quick segue. So if you if you think that kind of like financial, you know, uh, like, you know, incentive on, on the, on the lender side is valuable to you, then just drop us a note and we can relay that back to, to them, to, to VSECU or to the others kind of running, running that pilot. Um, so it's a nice complimentary kind of tool to, to the disclosure side of things. Yeah, please uh, relay, I, I relay that to them too, but I, I think that Absolutely. I mean, there's so many people who want to lower their carrying costs and do the retrofits, but it's, I mean, the sticking point, I think, is, is the finances, you know, over and over and over again. It also is the misinformation. So the fact that you guys have been able to bring this together and not confuse the consumers and, and is, is really awesome. I think I'm in Scotland, actually, at the moment with my daughter, and they have a rating system here that you literally get just a letter grade. When you list a property, you're just going to that um, it's actually really great. I mean, they take the whole life cycle analysis in, so it's an even more um, in-depth um, rating system. But um, yeah, the Energy Certified Scotland is a really easy way to know what you're buying um, and it's mandatory. It's not even voluntary. Great, yeah. So we there, need money. Yeah, there's been Just a lot please. of... Um, movement um, outside of the US on these types of labeling and disclosure policies that are mandatory in a lot of other places. So we can see the trends and see that it is um, even across the US continuing to, to come. So um, we're really proud of the city of Montpelier for kind of pioneering this effort in Vermont and excited to see where it goes when, we, when it becomes mandatory. So yeah, um, I think if there, are, let me pause and see if there are any other questions and then we can break out into our different rooms. Um, so I'm gonna be running a room, Julia and Brian will be running a room and Veronique will be running a room. And then um, I think we can reconvene back here at maybe 11.50 comments. And I've posted a bunch of resources in the chat um, in addition to all of our emails, if you'd like to reach out for more information. But if there are no more questions, I'll hand it to Are you breaking us up into rooms, Emmy, or? I think Katrina is going to, but I think oh, she's Katrina, having yeah. audio issues, so she might not be able to speak. I just made you a co-host, Emmy, so you should be oh, able okay. to do it. Great. Go over to the more button. Oops, hold on. All right, I've created three rooms and I've allowed participants to self-assign rooms. So Veronique and Julia, if you can self-assign yourselves to room two and three respectively, I will assign myself to room one and then everyone else can just go ahead and join a room. Mm. Might take us a, a couple minutes to get this together. And Katrina, I would say you can also probably stop the recording at this time. Thank you for